Hello, this is the Trade Site Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, July 3rd, 2016, and ending Friday the 8th. Monday is, of course, the U.S. 4th of July holiday. Banks and everything will be closed over here, so we will not have calls Sunday night going into Monday, although the levels will be posted for those of you who want to try to trade anyways. We'll resume everything Monday evening. Hope you have a great 4th of July if you're here in the U.S. Here's the dollar index daily chart. Did almost nothing the whole week, as you can see, very flat. Uh, we are wrapping up the first half of the year, the second quarter of the year in June, and uh, the Brexit thing has kind of calmed down finally, and so we really just didn't do much at all. We'll look at the intraday ranges, or interweek ranges in a minute, and you'll see how flat it actually was. Here's the euro dollar, climbed back up a bit, but again, very contained compared to prior weeks. Pound, I mean, look at that, stayed very, very narrow. Uh, better to look at it on the interweek to see how bad that was. The Aussie climbed just a little bit. Pound yen also very flat. Euro yen drifting higher. Pound Swiss very uneventful. New Zealand dollar. I'm going through these quickly. There's just nothing really happened this week that's going to change the landscape much. Uh, so let's go to the 30 minute charts. Here's the euro dollar. Low gap down on on uh, Sunday. Uh, we did get back up to fill that total range high to low of the week. Not even about 180 pips. Let's call it which is really, really light, obviously, and there were no standout days. Everything was narrow. Uh, most of the days themselves, basically 100 pips of range max. But remember, Euro usually trades 130 pips per day, so 180 for the whole week is really poor. Uh, here's the pound dollar, and you can see this is just as bad. Um, you know, you did get about, what is that, about, uh, let's call it 350 pips of range for the whole week. Uh, but most of that was actually on Monday. If you take Monday out, it's fairly flat, plus then we gap down in the middle of the session on Thursday, which was awkward. So, I mean, it wasn't a very exciting week. We had a couple winners, a couple losers, and and that's about it. Not much else to say uh, from that perspective. All right, so what do we have to look forward to in the week ahead? Well, let's take a look at, actually, we'll put the daily chart back up here, and then let's take a look at uh, the data coming out this week. So we've got, uh, remember, Sunday's, uh, Monday's the holiday here in the U.S., so uh, starting Sunday, 7.50 p.m. Eastern Time, Japan, monetary base, the MI inflation gauge and building approvals out of Australia. Going into Monday, Europe's got the Spanish unemployment change, Syntex investor confidence, construction PMI out of, out of UK, PPI out of Europe. Uh, we've got New Zealand in the evening, New Zealand business confidence number, AIG services index out of Australia, got New Zealand's ANZ commodity prices number, retail sales and trade balance out of Australia at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday. Uh, services PMI out of China, 10-year bond auction out of Japan. We've got a rate announcement out of the Bank of Australia going into Tuesday, 3.15 a.m. I hear all of the uh, European countries release their services PMI numbers, Spain, Italy, France, Germany, and the broad European sector, and then the U.K. every 15 minutes, basically, starting at 3.15 p.m. Eastern, a.m. Eastern time on uh, Tuesday. We've got retail sales out of Europe. We've got uh, factory orders out of the U.S. in the morning along with the IBD tip economic optimism number. New Zealand's GDT price index. Uh, we got a member, a Fed member speaking here in the U.S. We've got German factory orders. Uh, we got the Australian, uh, it doesn't matter, we got retail PMI out of Europe at 4.10 a.m. Wednesday. Housing equity withdrawal in the U.K. Trade balance out of U.S. and Canada. That's one of our big three each month, so we would be half size Tuesday night going into Wednesday. Uh, U.S. final services PMI, non-manufacturing PMI, and the minutes from the last Fed meeting come out at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, AIG Construction Index out of Australia, leading indicators out of Japan going into Thursday, German Industrial Production, French Trade Balance, Foreign Currency Reserves and CPI out of Switzerland, Halifax HPI and Manufacturing Production and Industrial Production and Tenure Bond Auction out of the UK, Challenger Job Cuts here in the US along with the ADP Non-Farm Employment Number, uh, building permits, unemployment claims, that's the weekly number, building permits is in Canada, IVPMI also in Canada, U.S., we've got their weekly uh, crude oil and natty gas numbers both on Thursday because of the Monday holiday. Japan, current account, bank lending, and average cash earnings followed by the economy watcher sentiment. And then the Swiss unemployment rate, German trade balance, French government budget balance, French industrial production, goods trade balance out of the U.K., then the unemployment change in Canada, and the U.S. unemployment rate and non-farm payroll, another one of our big three. So we'll be half size. So we got no trade Sunday night. Monday night back to normal, Tuesday night half size ahead of the trade balance, Wednesday night back to normal, Thursday night half size because of the unemployment rate, the uh, non-farm payroll. And then uh, on uh, Saturday, China releases their CPI and PPI data. 
Uh, all right, so that's uh, that's the week ahead. There's a lot of data and key data, but it's a short week because of uh, the holiday, obviously. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great 4th of July holiday and a great trading week ahead.